pray the Spirit of God's touching your life and ministering to you. And I believe that uh, God's not finished with us yet. Do you believe that? And I'm excited. I've been sharing over the last uh, uh, five or six weeks about the covenant. And the more I study the covenant, the more I understand the covenant, the more I realize that we are missing out on so much as Christians. There's so much more. I want you to turn to somebody and say, there is so much more for me in the kingdom of God. There's so much more that God wants to do for me. There's so much more that God's made available for me. There's so much more. And of course, it's all started as I started to read a scripture that spoke about that God came to the Gentiles, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us. And of course, we know that God entered into a covenant with Abraham. And he said, I will be your God and you will be my people. I will watch over you. We've read a lot and we've spoken a lot about the covenant, how God uh, prepared a place as, they, as he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt how they had a pillar of fire to, to, to keep them warm and to give them light at night. How they had a great cloud to, to protect them from the fierce sun, uh, desert sun during the day. How he fed them in the wilderness. How he gave them water in a desert. How, how he, he brought them out rich and abundantly blessed. And they're the things that we've got to understand that, that our God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. God is a rewarder. He's not a withholder. And I know that in mankind and in humanity, we say a lot of things. And sometimes we say, why doesn't God do this? Why doesn't God do that? God says, you have not because you ask not. You know, there's a, and if you don't know what is yours, you won't ask. If you don't realize what is yours, you won't ask. And Kendall was sharing uh, before about the, the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross. And Jesus went to a cross to set us free. And sometimes we can't understand it because we know that there was a time when, when Jesus cried out to his father and he said, Hey, Dad, if there's any way, will you please take what I'm going to have to go through? Will you take it from me? If there's another way. And I think at that time, God would have said to Jesus, Yes, son, there is other ways. Uh, you know, you can go after Buddha or you can go this and you can do that. Or you can just be a nice person. And a lot of the theologies of, the, of humanity today, he could have chosen any of those things, but he, he said, no, son, there's only one way, and you're it. And I was trying to, as I was sitting in my office, I was trying to think, how could Jesus endure that sort of pain and suffering uh, for, for, for people like me? But you see, I don't understand sometimes my relationship that I have with my Saviour. And unless we understand the relationship that he has with us, we, 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 don't, we, we can't really receive from him. And, the, and I started to liken it like this, that uh, uh, you, if you've got a child and, and, or a son or a, or, or a brother or whatever it might be that, that is in need, and, it's, I, and I likened it to this like somebody that needed a kidney. And today, if my, if my son needed a kidney and, and, I, and I could give him that kidney, I, as, as they were taking me down to the theatre, if I saw the suffering that my son was going through, if I saw the pain and, the, and, and all that, and even the death sentence that was on his life because of, of, the, of the, the disease that was in his kidney, and I had a kidney that I could give to him, though I was going to go through suffering and though I was going to go through some pain, there would be a joy that was on the inside of me knowing that what I was going to give was, was going to bring life to my son. And I believe that that's what Jesus saw as he was on that cross. He saw, I'm going to not just you know, put a band-aid on their problem, I'm going to totally deliver them out of it. I'm going to totally set them free. I'm going to, I'm going to make a way that, 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 is, that is going to be so powerful that they're going to be able to live in victory. They're going to be able to live above and not believe. I'm going to make them the head and not the tail. I'm going to cause them to overcome. I'm going to cause them to triumph over all of their enemies. They're going to realize that no weapon formed against them can prosper. That I've made a way where there is no way, but I've made a way in a wilderness and I, I've made a way for them to, to live above. All that the enemy wants to throw at you. And so today, as we're, as we're here, I, I want to just us to remember that and, and come from that sort of thinking that, that Jesus did it so that we could be free. 
And I want to tell you that after that person, if, if I had that operation, and then, you know, you, sure, you go through some pain and you go through a little bit of stuff, and, and goodness knows what, but then as you see your son that was once laying dead, half dead in a bed, or if you saw, you know, the way that life was ebbing from them, and now all of a sudden you see them skipping along, you see them out there enjoying life, and you see the victory inside them, I want to tell you that would make you rejoice. And I want to tell you today, Jesus doesn't want us flopping around in failure and defeat. He's only satisfied when we live in victory. I, I enjoyed what Kendall said about Jesus with the grave. Can you imagine if he went up to the, to the grave people and said, I, I, want a, I want a grave, but I only want it for three days? <laughs> How much? <laughs> I only want it for three days. I don't want it forever. Just three days will do. <laughs> Anyhow, that's my, that's, that, that's, that's my sense of humor, amen. <laughs> Jesus wants to set us free. So I want to sh share this morning about the new covenant. Ephesians chapter 2, 11, uh, at, at 12 and 13, it says, Therefore remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in this world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were afar off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. You who were afar off, and if you're afar off today, I want to tell you the blood of Jesus Christ can bring you near. He wants to draw you. He wants to build you. He wants to strengthen you. He doesn't want you to be a failure. And I want to say to this to the church, we're to stop acting like as if we're still aliens and act like a son. Don't act like as if we're still aliens. Uh, Israel were a blood covenant people. The church today, the born again church, is a blood covenant people. Do you believe that today? We're a blood covenant. In Luke twenty two fifteen, 15, this is what it says. Then he says to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Why? Why, did he, why was he excited about this particular moment? Why was he excited about this particular day? There was many days, but this particular day he was excited because what was happening is this was the climax of what Jesus Christ had come onto this planet for. He was going to cut a covenant with His people. He was going to break some strongholds. It, it, the Bible says, For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that He might destroy the works of Satan. Do you believe that today? For this purpose. And for this purpose, Jesus was made manifest. And now we find a climax, a time when Jesus knew that in a few days he was going to die. In a few days he was going to be tested and tried. In a few days there, he was going to go through agony as he went through Hades. But in a few days also, he was going to rise again, triumphant over every foe. He was going to rise victorious. He was going to bring about a new covenant relationship with man. Man was about to cut an amazing thing, the great, most powerful thing that any man or any woman will ever experience on this planet is to be able to come into a blood relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. The blood will never lose its power. Amen. The blood will never lose its power. I want to tell you there's something about the covenant of God. As Jesus was cutting this covenant, as Jesus was walking in power and authority, and as He said, with fervent desire, I have desired to cut this covenant with you. And I want to tell you that this today, that the disciples that were with Him knew exactly what He was talking about. This was no, you know, perhaps to you and I, when some of these words were spoken that, that we hear, we don't really understand the full relevance. We don't understand the full impact that they have. But you see, as Jewish boys growing up in Jewish synagogues and learning about the covenants and learning about the rituals and learning about all the feasts and everything like that, and everything that that represented, they totally understood the power and authority. They were there under a covenant. They were under a shadow. They were there. Jesus said, that blood that I hold in my hand, it's a shadow of what I'm about to do. 
This, this bread that I'm about to break is a shadow of who I am and what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to release you. I'm going to set you free. I'm going to break strongholds. I'm, you're going to enter into a relationship with me that if you follow me, if you walk with me, you will never know defeat in your life. What an amazing statement. What an amazing thing that God did. You see, the disciples knew exactly what's going on. And it's for you and I to find out exactly what Jesus meant when, when, he, when, we, bring, when we break bread every morning, every Sunday. And, and he says, do this in remembrance of me. I want to tell you today, we are remembering what Jesus Christ has done. He cut a covenant with his own blood. Amen. He, he did something so dynamic and so powerful. And he invites you and I to come in and sup with him. He invites you and I to be part of this great covenant relationship. In victory, amen. In victory. I want to tell you that there's so much that you and I can get. You know, the Passover speaks of deliverance from bondage, from slavery, from the, from the cruel taskmasters. They came out of Egypt healed, victorious. Jesus was uh, linking the old with the new. He, he was identifying with the old, the be, but he was speaking about the beginning of a new. Everybody say new. See, there's something better, a better covenant, amen? The disciples knew exactly what he was saying. When he said in Luke 22:19, 19, and he took the bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body which was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he took the cup after supper saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood which is shed for you. Friend, let me say it again. They knew exactly what he was talking about. You see, they, they knew about this Jesus. If you remember, what, some time back, Jesus, he wanted them to understand. And sometimes when God asks you questions and God gets involved in your life, we may not understand it. It may seem foolishness, but he's wanting to establish things in your life. He wants to establish that he loves you with an everlasting love. He wants to establish in you that he will never, ever leave you nor forsake you. No matter where you go, he will draw you. He will love on you. He will give you opportunity to come back to him. He will do whatever he can. Kendall was talking about spring back, you know, whatever it was, spring, bounce back, spring back. Bounce back. I, want, I, I praise God that we're made of rubber, that we won't just, you know, not a, like an egg, Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. But, you know, that we'll be made out of rubber, that we'll bounce back onto that mountain. We'll bounce back onto the promises of God. We will not allow the enemy to triumph over us. And if you remember there in the Scriptures that one day Jesus came to them and He said, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And of course, they, they were there pondering, but then in the moment, Peter stood up and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, now to us, that's a, that's a statement, but to them, to a Jewish boy, every Jew was expecting the Messiah to come. Amen? They were expecting Him. They didn't expect Him to come the way He came. They expected Him to come in all royalty and all fame and, and all the tussles and everything else. But he, he came as a baby and He was in a manger and a, a lowly place. They didn't expect him and they, and they missed him. But you see, deep down in their hearts, Jesus then spoke to these disciples who said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then he said, Flesh and blood is not revealed of this, this to you, uh, but Jonah. He said, But my Father who is in heaven. Then he spoke about the pebble and then he spoke about the rock. He said, Upon this rock, I'm going to build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. Friend, look, we are not some poorly, I don't know what, I today have the keys of the kingdom, amen. You and I have the keys of the kingdom. And if we don't understand what that means, well, friend, we better find out what it means. If you don't know what it means, we'll go around with just a rattly bunch of keys. They're not toys to play with. They're not something you give your child to shut it up. <laughs> It's something there that God wants us to open up the promises, the kingdom of God. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Friend, we can walk around on this planet like a bunch of paupers or we can walk around like a bunch of kings. Amen? It's up to us. Choose you this day who you're going to serve. What you're going to do with your life. 
They knew exactly what it was. They'd already worked that out, that you are the Christ, you are the Son of the living God. And so today, now he's saying, today, this scripture has been fulfilled. Today, I'm going to cut a covenant with you. This is my body, which was broken for you, amen. This is the blood of the new covenant, which I'm giving for you, amen. I'm, we're going to enter into a new covenant. You're going to cut a covenant relationship with me today. You're going to get born again. You're going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. You're going to, you're going to carry my message. What an amazing thing. Friend Church, we're not just here to come of a Sunday and sing a few songs. We're not just here to, to listen to somebody bash his gums and preach a message. We're here to get inspired and motivated and challenged and go out there and win somebody to Christ. Go out there and carry this message. Go out there as joint heirs with Jesus. Do what Jesus did, amen. Saw the sick, he prayed for them and healed them. It was dangerous, as somebody said, I think it might have been Kendall, it'd be, be dangerous to go to funerals. <laughs> it was dangerous for Jesus to turn up at funerals. He raised them up. <laughs> it'd be sad if the old widow was, was, was having a, already spent the inheritance. <laughs> Put him back in the box. No. <laughs> the disciples knew exactly what he was saying. He knew, he, he knew that. Likewise, he took the cup. They knew that, that Christ, the Redeemer, he was the, the, the Redeemer, the Messiah. The disciples knew that night they were entering in to the strongest, most sacred covenant known to mankind. See, again, we come out and we, we give our lives to Jesus. We have an altar People come out the front. Okay, you know, friend, we've got to understand that what happened just then, we can't see some things, but that person that just received Christ entered in to the most powerful relationship that man can ever enter into. Nancy and I, we got married 55 years ago. 55 years, you don't look 55. <laughs> And we, we entered into a covenant relationship. But friend, that, that, that's something there. But this relationship, the day that I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I entered into a more powerful covenant than that. I entered into something so powerful and, and where Christ cut, gave His blood for me. What an amazing thing. What an awesome thing. They were entering into the most powerful covenant known to mankind. In Hebrews 10, 9, it says, Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. Jesus brings us a new covenant, having fulfilled the old covenant requirements. It's a brand new covenant. Old covenant was sealed with circumcision, the new covenant is sealed with the new birth or salvation. John said these words in John 3, he says, Marvel not that I say to you, you must be born again. You must be born again, amen. You can't just have church and, and just have nice people. Might as well go and join the Rotary Club. You've got to get born again. And more than, oh no, let me say it again. When you get born again, we need to have our eyes opened to what we entered into. Is that okay? We've got to understand what, what, what we got involved in. He did not throw us a life raft and leave us in a pool of sharks and say, I hope you make it. He totally took us out of that kingdom and brought us into a brand new kingdom. Sometimes we try to live in both kingdoms. Very difficult. The Bible talks about the gulf widening. You know, once upon a time you can you could walk and nobody really noticed much. <laughs> I've done this a few times. I've split my trousers too. <laughs> but how many people know the gulf's widening? <laughs> Sooner or later you see people walking in, you, you'll, you'll know. <laughs> you'll know straight away. <laughs> the gulf is widening. 
And we've got to choose this day who we're going to serve. <laughs> Somebody just got it. <laughs> the old covenant had a Levitical priesthood. The new covenant has Jesus as our high priest and we are a royal priesthood. You believe, believe, believe that? We're a royal people. The old covenant had a temple in which God dwelt in the holy of holies between the cherubims. That's Exodus 40. In the new covenant, our bodies are the temple of God and the spirit dwells within us. The old covenant, he was over there, but the, 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 the curtain has been rent from top to bottom. God got out, amen. <laughs> Let's not put him back in there. Let him, let him live in us, let him live in us. Let him live in us. I want to hurry through some stuff because I, I really want to get to some things here. Jehovah bound himself with an oath to the old covenant. Jesus has also bound himself with an oath to the new. The Bible says this, it says in Mark eleven twenty three 23 and 24, it says, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. Can, listen, sometimes we, we read this and, we, and, and we, 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 what happens is that People who do not understand start to, uh, com or start to argue with what God says or they start to pull down the people that say these phrases and they say, oh, they're just this or they're just that. They're name it and they're claim it or that. No, friend, I want to tell you, if you don't know the covenant that God has cut with us, that He says to me and He, and he, and he says to Shane, he says, Jane, whatever you ask in my name, I want to do it for you. Yeah. Not only I want, I will do it for you. So the, the people come in and say, you shouldn't be doing that, Jane. You shouldn't be asking that. You shouldn't be doing that because, you know, God's God and God can do whatever He wants. And if He wants to give it to you, He will. No, He said, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do for you. Do you believe that today? And what he's saying is, come on, I've entered into a covenant relationship with you. If you don't understand the covenant, you do not believe that you deserve to have whatever you ask. God is a God of blessing and He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And God wants to make us the head and not the tail. He wants us to triumph over every circumstance and every situation. And I believe that God wants to bless us more than you could even imagine or think. We limit God. Don't act like as if you're still an alien. Act like a child of God. Don't leave everything up that one day in heaven you're going to get it. You don't need to get healed in heaven. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> Crazy church. You see, as a builder, they that build on the sand are going to get disappointed. You have to have a foundation to build your Christian life on. Otherwise, the enemy comes in and he will erode and, and pull down everything that God is trying to and will establish in your life. He will erode it. He will destroy it. He will take it away. You've got to know that I am in a covenant relationship with my Father, that I am a joint heir with Jesus, that He is my brother, amen, that, that He wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I could ever imagine or think. And if I can build my relationship with Him on that foundation, I will approach Him in a totally different way. I'll approach the promises of God not on sand that arose, but on a foundation, believing that God wants to deliver me, wants to heal me, wants to set me free. Amen. We've got to break down some stuff. We've got to break down some walls. We've got to break down uh, the lies of the enemy. Our faith has got to build, build on this foundation. You see, I've got to understand the resources of heaven stand back of Jesus Christ. Back of the new covenant. Do this in remembrance of me. We remember the cross and the suffering. We remember the victory over death. 
This day I cut a covenant with mankind. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord can be saved. He, he has done such an amazing thing. The old contains the new, the new contains the old. He said, this is my blood. Remember, they were celebrating a Passover. They knew exactly what he was saying. I'm going to cut the covenant with you today and my blood that is given this day will never, ever, ever, ever lose its power. The word testament that's being used here, this is a blood of my of a New Testament. The blood, this, this which is used in Scripture is the same word that we use for will. It's the last will and testament. In a will, you give away your possessions. Is that correct? You can't give away a car or a house or whatever it might be if you don't have one. Jesus is saying that all I am and all I have is yours. Can we, can we let that penetrate our thinking? This is my body. This is my blood. I'm cutting a new covenant with you. And this new covenant that I'm cutting with you, this is what it states. All that I am and all that I have and every victory I've ever won is yours. By my stripes you are healed. You were, you are. You believe that today? So it's the same word as will. See, God, this book, the Bible, is His will. Friend, we, the church, must read the Bible. You've got to read the book. You've got to understand what God has given us. One of the most dangerous things things that I know of today is teachers, and many of them are on our television broadcasting today, that are teaching literally rubbish. Can I say that again? I want to quote, teaching literally rubbish, denying what God has given to us trying to make excuses for man's failures. The Word of God, we must read it. We must be full of the Holy Ghost. You know, one of the things I, I was praying the, the other day, and, and I'm, I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. And David, when he got into trouble, he cried out to God. He said, whatever you do, take not your Holy Spirit from me. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Today, Pentecostal churches are pushing the Holy Spirit out the door. Is that true? Come on, don't have to just get so excited because I'm preaching so good. <laughs> we need the Holy Spirit's guidance. We need the Holy Spirit like never before. We need His revelation. We need His understanding. We need, we need to know what God says. You know, the Bible in, in Ephesians chapter 1, it says, Since I heard of your love for God and for the brethren, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that God would open the eyes of your understanding that we might know what is the exceeding greatness of His power towards us who are cut the covenant with Jesus Christ. What is the exceeding greatness of His power to us who believe according to the working of His mighty power which He worked in Christ when He raised Christ from the dead and seated Him far above principalities and powers and dominion and might and seated Him at His own right hand in heavenly places. Far above all that rubbish, amen. Far above. What is the exceeding greatness of His power? What is the exceeding greatness of His power? Amazing, amazing, amazing things that God has done for us. I pray that, that somehow or other we're getting something out of this. this I, I am preaching to myself here. I am, I am being built up in my most holy faith. I am, I am being extended. I, 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 
I, I can't express what, I'm, what, what God is doing as I'm going through this. This is not for you, it's for me also, amen. I'm not up here just telling you what to do. I, I am getting excited about what God is telling me I can be. I, I, okay, let, let's bounce back again. Let's jump up and claim what God has given to us. Let's claim the promises of God. Let's stand and be strong and triumphant over the enemy. Let not the enemy triumph over us. Let's rise up, amen. Let's declare, let's speak to those mountains, speak, speak to those principalities and powers, and speak to the strongholds, and speak to the sicknesses, and speak to the diseases, and speak, speak to the poverty, and speak to whatever it is. Speak to that thing and command it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a joint heir with Jesus. I'm a born again, spirit filled man or a woman of God. Victorious in Him. Why fluff around playing? Saw on the news the other day that the bush turkeys are undermining the rocks. <laughs> you know, when we're meant to be eagles, amen. Don't walk around with the bush turkeys. It tries to undermine the word of God, undermine the spirit of God. It's a will, it's a will, it's a will. It's just what God has. This is God's will for your life that you would be prosperous. I wish above all things you'd be prosperous in good health. All that I am is yours. My father becomes your father. <laughs> That's good, eh? You're a joint heir with Jesus. Everything I have is yours. You know, before you can claim the benefits of a will, you have to know what's in the will, what's been left to you. Just like in the natural A will can get contested. Is that right? And that's what the devil does. So you sit in here and you, or you go to a meeting, you read the Bible, you read the Word of God, and you read in there, it says, I wish above all things that you'd be prosperous and good health. I, 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 by my stripes you are healed. Oh, glory to God. I love you. I'll never ever leave you nor forsake you. Read all that. And then you, you get excited and you think, yeah. And then the devil says, he can test it. He said, oh, that's not for you. I want to fill you with my power. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You, you, that's not for you. Devil can test it. See, when I first got saved and I started to read the Bible, I read where it talked about water baptism. And and I wanted to be obedient to the Word of God. And I wanted to get water baptized. So I went to my minister who was a, a Methodist. And I said to him, I said, I read in the Bible where I should be water baptized as a believer. He said, oh, he said, were you baptized, as, as sprinkled as a baby, were you? I said, oh, yeah, I got sprinkled. He said, that's all you need. I said, Thank you. see, that straight away, you're trying to move in with God and all of a sudden, the enemy starts to contest it. And sometimes the people that he uses are the ones that you don't expect to. You know what I mean? You catch my drift? Just because somebody's got a collar on or somebody says he's a pastor doesn't mean he's going to give you the truth. Come on, I'm not knocking anybody. I'm just talk, talking truth here, amen? Because we've all, how many of us have been victims? Come on, victims. And, and, and you see, that's, that's how it goes. That's, that's what's, what God's doing. I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> oh, I got what? And, and, and I went up and I, I, he said, you don't have to do that. So I just kept reading the Bible and, and I saw it again. It's in every page, Nelly, when, you, when God's on your case, amen. And, and, I, and I saw it again and I went to him again. And I told him again, I said, I, I just can't get this out of me. I, I think I should get water bad. No, you don't need to. Five times I went to him. The last time I read the Kellogg's Corn Flakes packet and it says sprinkle with sugar, immerse in milk. <laughs> <laughs> this word immerse doesn't mean sprinkle. Amen? 
It means go under. And I went up to him. I was determined this time. I said, man, you're going to have to water baptize me. And he said, okay, I'll water baptize you. And straight out of my mouth says, no, you won't. He said, what's wrong with you, man? I've only been saved a little while. This man's been through university, through, been to seminaries, cemeteries, whatever you call them, <laughs> and done all that stuff. And, 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 and I, said to, I said to him, I said, he said, Neil, he said, you've asked me five times. Finally, I said, I'll do it. And when I say I'll do it, you say, no. Why? I said, because I don't want an unbeliever doing it. I didn't even have a clue what I was saying. But see, what, I didn't, what I'm starting to realise is that that day, even though I didn't understand it fully, that day I said, Jesus, will you come into my life? I entered into a covenant relationship with a Jesus that says, I'll never, ever leave you nor forsake you. And somehow or other, you're going to bounce out of this. You're going to get out of this. I'm going to take you. Into... And we went to the Assemblies of God Church. Then I went the next day. Nancy wouldn't come because she was a Methodist. <laughs> <laughs> You're not baptizing me, I'm being sprinkled. <laughs> yeah. But God, God sorted that out. Then, then we went to the Jordan and Nancy wanted to get rebaptized, and I had a trouble with that. <laughs> so, yeah. We are in a covenant relationship with a real God that will not break his covenant. He is knocking on your door today. He is calling your name. He is wanting your life. He called you before you were even formed in your mother's womb. Don't let the accuser, don't let the one that comes to try to steal, steal the very life that Christ wants to give you. Without Christ, there is no hope. But with Christ, there is everything. Amen. Friend, this is a great salvation. This is an amazing salvation. Would you bow your heads with me today? If you're in this house today and you know the hand of God is touching you and calling you and drawing you to himself, you might have gone away from God. You might have gone, I don't know where. Doesn't matter where you've gone, where you've tried to go. But can I say this to you today? That if you can just open up your heart to Jesus, he will flood in. If you can just say, God, I'm sorry. I want to tell you, God will go to the highest mountain. You'll go to the lowest valley. The blood will never lose its power. And the blood is still speaking today. Today, while our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, you're in this house today and you know you're here by appointment with God. You know that, even though you may be afar off. Let the blood of Jesus draw you back today. Will you today respond to Jesus? Will you respond to him? Will you finally let go and let God?